Hey, what's up guys? This is Mosin here coming at you with a new WoW Classic video. And today I want to show you how we can get really crazy cool consumables for every class that will make a huge difference. And in the worst case, you can actually make some gold with it. So um, if you like, stick around. We'll jump right into the intro and start off with the video. Again, welcome everybody, and uh, today I thought uh, we should cover the Angoro Crystal Consumables because they are stronger than people really do think. We recently got into raiding stuff again above Blackwing Lair, and uh, in those dungeons or raids you can actually uh, see how big of a difference some consumables make. Especially after our first attempts on Visitus again in AQ40, that is the boss where you need to bomb all of the blobs, preferably at the same time, or the more blobs you kill, the more his health drops basically. I made a video on that on this YouTube channel if you want to go and check it out. And these bosses in AQ40 really require as much DPS as you can get. The same counts for Nexramus later on, so since we started late on this server on uh, Northdale, uh, we were kind of coming in late and we're a little bit behind on gear so we can't really just out gear everything and um, we really have to be on point with our tactics uh, to maximize the dps so coming from there we uh, made everybody go and uh, get some Angoro consumables to get the crystal charges to bomb the visitors ads for everybody that was not an engineer and that is how i got the idea to make a video about the Goro crystals in general so I thought maybe some of you guys would appreciate that because they're actually easier to get than people think. So first of all of course the question why the hell should you get these and uh, spend your night maybe before or after raids in Ungoro Crater and farm stupid crystals that you then turn in. Well the answer is they are um, crazy strong basically free and easy to get consumables. For every class there's something something useful and it really doesn't take all that long to get these crystals. I set myself a limit of 15 to 20 minutes to farm as many crystals as I could get and then see what I could turn in, put the rest on the bank and the crystals I knew I wouldn't need I was going to uh, go and sell and I actually got uh, two turn -ins out of it and you get more items per turn in. For every class there's something that you can really profit from. So for example, there's the Crystal Restore, and uh, that's just a basic heal, which uh, makes you survive in boss fights more. Crystal Force, obviously, is um, one of the things that uh, increases your spirit, so this is really, really good for any healing class, maybe except for Paladin. There's a Crystal Charge, which is basically um, you know, an explosive uh, consumable that deals damage to everything around you, which makes it really strong in PvE. And the Crystal Spire, which basically acts like a Thorns buff, an additional Thorns buff on you, which reflects damage. Furthermore, these are fun items that not everybody will have, right? So um, this is really something cool where you can, you know, uh, shine uh, in front of your friends and uh, make them wonder what, what the hell you just used in a duel or in the raid situation and they will have no idea what's going on. Same for um, PvP, these items can really make a difference in PvP if you just think about the Crystal Charge or the Heal, for example. Um, all these things really do add up, especially also the Armor Pen debuff, which is also stronger than you really would think. In the worst case, you'll have some Crystal consumables that you do need and some that you do not really need. And in that case, you can basically sell all the crystals that you are not going to turn in anyway and or the leftovers and make some pretty decent gold. Some of these crystals go from 20 silver to around 40 to 50 silver each so um, it's not nothing you can uh, really make some gold um, some additional gold after your farm runs with this. Probably the biggest reason why you should get these crystals is they help in raid encounters immensely and I mean massively. The visitors fight is probably one of the prime examples and um, the thing is engineers usually use the goblin sapper charges but these things here are very easy to get as well so a good combination of these two give you a lot more basically dynamite to choose from also the really cool thing is you don't have to be an engineer and engineers usually as i just said use the goblin sapper charges but uh, non-engineers don't really have an option aside from these things. So the best thing you could probably do is 
go and get the crystal charge and then help your raid out. Which leads into the next point that I made. It doesn't require any professions to do this. So you have a really cool off-raid activity, if you like, where your gear can come in really handy, especially in PvP situations when these crystals might be contested. Another good reason is probably that your raid leader will love you. And this is probably something that everybody of you can relate to because um, if you have somewhat of a min-max mentality, right, you have a lot of options to you, but they usually cost a lot of gold to get. But these things are just basically free when you run around on Goro Crater and, uh, you know, gather them. You can even exchange with friends and make it easier. The result will be that you will be higher in DPS charts, you will be higher in potentially healing charts, you will not die as much, or you will just show effort uh, to your raid lead and they will see that you are stacking the Angoro buffs. So the next step would be, how the hell do we get these? Where do we get them? Well, as I said, and you probably already noticed, it's all about the Angoro crater. But basically, you just want to run laps, just do some circles in the whole zone, and you can usually find these crystals along mountain ranges, uh, trees, or objects in general. I recommend the add-on gatherer to keep track of where you already looted some crystals, that really makes it easier. But as a general rule of thumb, mountains are always a good spot to find the crystals, so are trees or any objects laying around in the wilderness. Once you have gathered all of these crystals, uh, you can turn them in at the pylons. That's the northern, the western and the eastern pylon. Those are basically structures with a big crystal on top, which you can then click and uh, complete a quest to turn in the raw crystals for the desired consumable. Now for all the new players maybe that haven't really touched any of the vanilla stuff yet, to get to Ongoro Crater, and this might be very clear for veterans, but sometimes there's a lot of new players, you need to go to Southern Tanaris, which is in the very south of uh, Kalimdor, and then you go to the south-southwest part of this desert, and then you will find at the bottom of Tanaris there's a, like a small path leading into the crater. In Ongoro you just make your way to the very north, and there you'll find a flight path, you can go get it, and then from then on you can always fly there. Another great tip on where to find these crystals is uh, sometimes the mountains allow access deeper into the uh, highlands in there. So sometimes you'll find a path leading up into um, the mountain ranges in the sides of the, of the map. And there's usually some plateaus with a lot of mobs in it, but these usually also have a lot of crystals in it. So it is really worth going up these little pathways and explore the plateaus up there to get some additional crystals. Now here's the deal. Like always in vanilla, it has to be a little bit annoying to get to the desired quest to turn these crystals in. But don't worry, this time it is not such a hard and long quest chain. All you really have to do is um, first do the quest Crystals of Power, and that one is given by JD Colley in the cave at the flight point I just talked about. Um, you just have to go all the way through the cave, and at the end of it you will find a nasty little gnome, right, and she will give you a quest. She will then send you around Ongoro Crater to gather crystals, each color, and you basically just turn it back in. And in the second step you have to discover all of the aforementioned pylons, which are located in the north, the east, and the west. In the third step, basically just turn it right back in, and now you are free to gather the crystals and either sell them or turn them in at the pylons. So as a quick summary for you guys, um, the western pylon offers the crystal restore, which is the heal, the crystal yield, which is the armor penetration, which makes that very interesting for um, melee classes, since in vanilla armor penetration really increases your damage by a lot and the damage of your whole raid, don't forget about that. Also, the western pylon offers the crystal ward, which gives you additional armor. The eastern pylon grants you the Crystal Force, increasing your spirits, so very interesting for healers, or the Crystal Spire, which for me, right now playing a Prot Paladin, is additional Reflect damage, which also makes it very valuable for me personally. And the Northern Pylon finally offers you the Crystal Charge, and this is probably one of the strongest ones. Uh, this is basically the AoE bomb for all, all of you non-engineers out there that want to contribute to the raid AoE. Now here's my small personal tips on how to increase the farm rate. So first of all, it's a good group activity, right? You can't be in all places at once anyway. So you might as well just get one or two people from your guild and you all take off into different locations and uh, thus basically just scouring the whole crater and uh, spreading out and increasing your chance of actual loot. 
Now, once you have done that, you can come back together while having a chat on Discord or whatever after like 10 or 20 minutes or even 30 minutes, depending on how crazy you want to go. And then you basically just communicate what you need and you can start exchanging the colors that you are not in need of and have left over to your guildmates. You can do the same and uh, you just utilize the uh, world channel, but I would actually suggest you just start with the general chat. And in that general chat, you start um, making a request to trade colors with other people. You'll be surprised how many le A levelers and B other farmers are right there that sometimes you don't even need the color that you really desire and you don't have any of. And sometimes you have a lot of green crystals, for example, that I personally don't need. And I just always trade 20 green crystals for the yellow ones, which I need for both. So I really double profit. In the end, whether or not you trade, totally up to you. Um, another good suggestion is uh, you can make some good gold with this as well. So if you're really not into the raiding consumable stuff, in the worst case, here you go, you have another gold farming tip because you can sell all of these um, crystals on the auction house for quite good money. A good combination is if you're more of a solo player or you just don't have anybody around that wants to go farm with you right now, you turn in what you have, you say, okay, I want to have three turn-ins of the desired uh, crystal. And the rest you just take with you to Ironforge, either bank it or put it on the auction house and get some money for your time. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I hope this was a somewhat interesting video for you. I just want to give you a quick new perspective on another set of consumables, aside from the usual potion farming. So if you liked the video, consider a subscription. It would really make me happy and uh, vote the video up. Aside from that, I'm streaming live on Twitch five days a week. So if you are interested in more classic live content, then you're very welcome to surf over there. It's uh, twitch.tv slash mosenlel. Link is in the description below. And if you like, join our Discord with hundreds of people that are like-minded and enjoy classic just as much as you do. The link to that is also in the description below. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.